Mike overwhelms Pete with his web of annoyance. Are you kidding me? That would just piss Pete off. And he'd totally destroy Mike with his furious rays of rage. Ah, but that activates Mike's aloof defense, which would kick in. And that's why, when combined their powers, they become the Mythwits. The show dedicated to all things geek and pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated it with sarcasm. Every week we bring you an, on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekiverse and to play a game with us. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Michael Cavis, and I'm joined this week by my co-host, Peter Bryant. Yes, you heard me correctly. I'm driving the ship. Oh my god, are we in the Bizarroverse? What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> and our guest this week, our returning guest, is Kirby Kid, David Clark of Offshoot Comics. Yes, and I'm joined also by my invisible late friend who I hear in the background, uh, Cedric Harris. Uh, <laughs> you want to come over and join us, Mr. Super Late? Traffic, yes. <laughs> this is Cedric. This is our editor uh, on Oddwell, uh, our videographer for basically everything that we don't want to do or can't understand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Cedric, hello. And of course, Black Superman, Walter Bryant could be with us tonight. Uh, but uh, simply Cedric, Cedric Harris will be joining in. And uh, let me uh, read this. Offshoot Comics is an independent comic book company focused on making comics for all people. Since 2011, they have been putting people of color and women in main character roles in their stories to make their comic book world reflect the real world. Recently, Offshoot Comics founder Dave Clark and Walter Bryant, and I'm going to say Cedric, uh, also uh, signed a deal with uh, Starburns Industries of famed Rick and Morty to create a new ongoing comic book series called Oddwell. And we did discuss this earlier this, uh, this year. I would uh, encourage everyone to go to uh, a uh, earlier this, <laughs> this season. Uh, this is where I would have typed in things. I'm still a little rusty, Pete. So, uh, <laughs> okay. But I uh, strongly recommend you go back. We'll put that in the show notes, uh, which, which one you can go back and learn about that. But we will actually be getting an update about uh, Starburns Industries, about Oddwell, and uh, you guys, I know we're up to episode three so far that's out. So, um, welcome, guys. Thank you. Hey, Good to be back. Yeah. Good to yeah. be here. Awesome. awesome. Um, Cedric, welcome. I hope, uh, I hope Dave was uh, able to uh, tell you about our antics and what we're doing here tonight. I told him nothing. <laughs> oh, fun. Zero. Okay. Well, then I'll, I will, I'll let you know as well as I'll let uh, all of our friends out in the... Uh, the internet, the Geekosphere, no, the Geekiverse, <laughs> that today we are going to, uh, after we get, gotta get caught up with you guys, we're going to have a little versus battle um, talk because uh, Pete and I had a, an episode a few, about a month or two ago where we were just discussing, you know, like our top three favorite uh, heroes, our top three favorite villains, ones we'd like to see. Scheduled during that evening was also I had an idea for some verses. We didn't even get to that, so oh. I thought it would be great to have you guys come on because you guys uh, are probably going to be a little more versed than uh, Pete and I both are combined uh, on on the 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 comic verse, and uh, we can just sort of have a discussion about some some who would wins, and uh, we can talk about you know okay. we can our friends in the chat can chime in. Um, Pete will monitor the chat. Um, and uh, that's kind of what we're gonna do. So before we start that, though, um, let's give me give us a brief. We know that uh, you guys uh, signed on with SBI Press that, uh, that uh, Oddwell is is happening. Kind of give us a, an update, like uh, what's going on with it. I, I see you can, but you can even buy it digitally. I will say that uh, at uh, what yep, is that yep. called? Comic comic comicology. Comicology. Yes. yes, it can be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what is Oddwell in, in uh, you know, 30 words or less? <laughs> okay. Well, Oddwell is a story about a frog with a robot arm trying to save a princess who's been cursed. Uh, and, you know, as serious as that sounds, you know, barring the robot arm frog, uh, <laughs> it's a pretty funny story. We've got flying sky dolphins, rainbow star ninjas, and all kinds of madness. And right now, like you said, uh, issues one through three is out. And uh, next Wednesday, issue four comes out. Um, if your comic book store hasn't ordered it, it is through Diamond Distribution, so you can go to any comic book store and they can get the book right away for you. Yep. Diamond Distributions. That's good to know. I, uh, I think I want to peek to our local comics uh, 
what is it? Alternate. Uh, what is it called? What do we go to? Oh, the, we go to. Oh man, now you got me on the spot. It's, <laughs> I know. Um, no, no, I, I, went I, I up know. There. I know. It, and, uh, oh god, uh, collector's corner. Collector's corner. Yes, collector's <laughs> corner. So I, I will. I will tell you this, uh, guys. That uh, it's good news and bad news. That when I went up there, they didn't have it, but they mm-hmm. said that because they keep selling out. So yes, that, that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, good yeah. Good issue there. one uh, from what our last report was is totally sold out. Uh, I myself only have one copy. The studio has no more copies. Uh, it's a great problem to have. <laughs> wow. All right. So just sign that and send it on over. I'll, I'll uh, give you my address. That'll be great. All right. Um, <laughs> he laughed, Pete. I don't, I don't think he uh, Anyway. All right. Uh, Cedric, uh, help us. What do you do uh, with uh, Offshoot? Well, I well with Offshoot, I like David said, I do a lot of the photography and videography stuff. Uh, specifically on Oddwell, I'm co-editor with Simon Ore, who's the head of uh, SBI Press. Um, you know, I work with David and Walter, and then our artist, uh, who's ever working on the cover or Acacia. And you know, I help get there. You know, put them on the same page, make sure they're all working together, make sure we're keeping on time. Uh, you know, one of my favorite notes I think I had was, you know, make it more sparklier. You know, because there is a uh, like in the Rainbow Cove, you see it, and I'm like, no, it needs to be more sparkles. So you know, making sure that the script and the art meet up um, is a lot what I do too. Right. Uh, getting the script all tight, because the awesome thing is David and Walter have all these great ideas, and I get to take this a hyper beam and just make it into like a help make it into a laser. Well, wow. so, and with uh, ninjas and uh, unicorns in that world, I'm sure that's uh, uh, extra hard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Um, so let's see. What else? Did we, was there anything else we wanted to cover before we dive in, guys? Uh, oh, you know what? There is. There is. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, L.A. Comic Con. Yes. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that. You so, guys were just uh, there. L.A. Comic Con, yeah, it was possibly our, possibly our best convention ever. Um, we sold out of everything that we didn't hold back because we wanted to make sure we had at least a couple books for the rest of the year. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it, it went fantastic. Uh, we got scouted by some companies that wanted to work with us. Um, there was one company that showed a little bit of interest that rhymes with Funko. It's just Funko. And we also had a really good, you know, like the pop figures and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, yeah, some, yeah. there's some interest there. So that, that was good to know. Yeah. I'm, I didn't cry or nothing. Uh, and then we had a really good panel uh, where, you know, we talked to some fans uh, yeah. that, that we had made and people stayed after to talk to us, which was really cool. Yeah. Um, but the fun fact thing, because here's what happened. So we needed someone to moderate the panel and I picked Cedric Yeah. because uh, I, for some reason, had assumed he had been on a panel before. Turns out <laughs> not only was this his first time moderating, it was his first time on a panel, period. Yes. Nice. <laughs> you handled it like a champ, didn't you? Oh, he thank did. You. Thank you very much. We didn't fire him, so, you know. I was not. <laughs> okay. Oh, that, that's God. the kind How of news is good news you guys run around there. Okay. Talk about being on the spot, thing, man. Guys. Being on a panel is, is, is a whole thing, right? Yeah. Moderating a panel is a, is, 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 that's a tall order, especially if you've never done it before. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like it's, it, it was good that uh, I was able to be with David and Walter because, again, it, it's so fun to work with them. It, it was like having a professional conversation, you know, just in front of a bunch of people that wanted to know everything. Yes. And we're uh, rabid for information. We, um, we, we had one girl who was jotting down notes the entire time. I was only I was only mostly nervous because of that. I was like, oh, no, <laughs> what is she going to ask? Yeah. <laughs> right. Nice. Uh, Pete, any uh, anything in the show notes that uh, you wanted to ask about? You were a little intrigued over something. Yeah. Okay. So I don't I don't know if this is is if this is the same thing that that I'm thinking of. Mike has a note in here. So so Mike put this show together. I want everyone to know, give, get, you know, for good or ill, whether you you let us know at the end of the thing. But. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Mike Mike's taking over the show for for November. So this the whole November this show is his. And I'm just I'm just the co-host. Uh but he has a note in here um uh battle just oh Mike don't let me forget to go over why that is at the end of this cuz I want to I want to make my announcement. Um yes sir. 
you have battle chess in here, and, yes. and it's a, a game part of it. Now, I remember when I was younger, in my, my early teens, I think it was, uh, which would have been the... <clears throat> um, there, was a, there was a video game called Battle Chess, where the, you, you played chess like you normally would, but when the pieces killed another piece, they would, like, attack them, right? It, it wasn't like you had to win it like a video game. You, you literally just played chess, but it was really cool because, like, you know, the rook would pop up into a big, like, stone golem and smash the uh, other piece into, into nothing. Mm -hmm. Does it have anything to do with the old battle chess, or is this something brand new? No, this is better than that battle chess. Okay. So <laughs> I grew up playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, so I, I always loved, like, you know, card games, like, you know, like that, and Magic the Gathering. Um, for one, I understood the Pokemon card game. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I like those, but I also like the strategy and forethought that, that chess required. Uh, so a few years ago, for our book Heroes or Us, I came up with a game called Battle Chess, which it involves a custom-made uh, chessboard uh, and pieces that represent the characters. Now, each of the characters naturally have their own abilities and all can move different amounts of steps. Um, but on top of that, we have a deck which you can pull support cards from. Uh, and which allows you to do other things like change the field, do different attacks, move around. Um, it, it, it adds like a like a fourth dimension uh, to, to chess. It's not it's not just you know you know I move here and then I win. It's I move here and then my opponent might have a trap for me that I didn't know about. So it combines the best parts of chess and the best parts of trading card games. And, wow. Uh, wow. Right. And it's yeah. like chess reinvented. So, yes. so my, that's that sounds like something I would like, right? <laughs> yeah, Pete. No, it's funny because I, I a couple of years ago I made I made a card uh, a card game that went that you played with chess. Now it was just regular chess. You played regular chess, but then you had these cards you could do stuff, which was similar to. Um, Oh, damn it, the Steve Jackson games, Nightmare Chess. It was similar. Yeah. That, was, that was a big influence on me, but mine has its own own take on it because obviously I wouldn't make a game if it was just another game. Uh, okay. So that's cool. I like that. I, I think I would like your game because it oh, sounds, like something, sounds like something that I would be very much interested in considering I made a game in the same kind of vein. Wow. Great minds. We're going to – hashtag great minds. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. Gentlemen, uh, I say we get into the Thunderdome. Uh, okay. Let's play. Let's play uh, the. Uh, what is that? Uh, who was that? The master, the game master. No, what is his name? Um, God, he was on Thor Ragnarok. You know, we all know him. Oh, Jeff oh, the, the grandmaster. The, huh? Yeah, the grandmaster. Let's play grandmaster. Okay. Uh, and let's let's pit some guys against each other. Uh, uh, here are the rules. Um, there are no rules. No. Um, Perfect. They, you, you can. I, I want to cross. I want to cross realms. I, I personally, my my. Um, Bailiwick is mainly in um, uh, Marvel uh, and mainly in the MCU. However, I, I've been reading up uh, on some of the uh, the comic variants, uh, and, and uh, where, where the, everything is, you know, it helps help a brother out. You know what I mean? If I'm like, yeah, I would say that this guy is like, oh no, no, you want him from sixteen sixteen. You don't want him from the from that. No, you know, correct. But, uh, so, but uh, let's start with some biggies. You know, let's start with some some um, some some uh, main events first what the heck uh i either have and we can we can choose this like i was talking to you earlier dave uh i have apocalypse versus thanos or apocalypse versus superman or we can do thanos versus superman for all i care but um i don't know who do you who do you think uh, why don't we, we we can discuss them all but where, where do you think uh, i'd like to see apocalypse and hmm. thanos. or do you think, think that that's a, thanos, that's a no thanos versus superman yeah, yeah. So, if we were to do Thanos versus Superman, okay, does this take place? Does it take place in the Marvel universe or the DC universe? Because that makes all the difference. Uh, yeah, Mike. Explain has, why. Hey, Mike. I'll tell okay. you. Hold on. So, wait, wait. So, I, I got. Oh. Don't forget. It's whose comic are we in too? Like, if you yeah. are going X Men versus Avengers, but you're in an X Men comic, that could make the difference too. Just want to point that right. out. But go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> So the, the reason why it matters with Thanos specifically is um, his, his biggest thing, obviously, is the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the, the Gauntlet's, you know, one real weakness is that it is powerless outside its own universe. Mm -hmm. So, so for example, uh, Darkseid has held the Gauntlet before, but it did nothing because yeah. it was <laughs> not from it's not its own universe. Mm -hmm. um, which, by the way, if you saw Ant Man, is why Ant Man was immune from the snap. Mm -hmm. Because he was right. not in the Marvel universe. Yes. Um, so we if concur. we were to do it, huh? We concur. 
Yes. <laughs> so if it was to be in the Marvel universe, then I would like to have that fight because I hate Superman. Uh, if we go in the DC universe, it might actually be a real fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah let, let's. I mean, let's take the. Let's take at least the Infinity Gauntlet out. Maybe, maybe we can <laughs> even give him one stone. I don't know. He could pick one stone or something. But I mean. Yeah, it, it has to be fair. The the Infinity Gauntlet is like a what is that called? Uh, that's like a not a MacGuffin. It's a, it's a, it's a Duex Machina. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it can yeah, do but, all things. Yeah. Right. But hold on, <laughs> Thanos against Superman. If if Thanos doesn't have the Gauntlet, I mean he's toast, right? I mean there's just no it's no contest, well, right? He's pretty strong. He's pretty strong, but it also depends. Does Thanos have prep time? The oh. most powerful weapon in all the comic books. Right. <laughs> which, and then which is why I didn't even want to touch. Batman versus Super. I didn't even want to go oh, there. Don't yes. worry. That's in one of my matchups. We're going there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All righty. All right, so hold on. But, well, I got, um, okay, so I got one for you. So I know, Mike, I don't know if you know this about Thanos, but, you know, Thanos has a bunch of cybernetics. He has, uh, does he have, bi I think he has biological, like, stuff. He has, like, everything. He's, like, one of these guys that has all yeah. these modifications and he's stuff. Andy's so, and a freak show, even from where he's from. Yeah, yeah, he's like a superhero. Yeah. He can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Hulk naturally. Yeah. Right. Yes. So I think he can hold his own against Superman for a while, but I think ultimately, if he doesn't have the gauntlet, I mean, I think, you know, just because DC made Superman so freaking ultra uber powerful that I think Thanos against Superman with no gauntlet, I think Superman's eventually going to win unless Thanos mm -hmm. comes up with some kind of devious, because he's more devious than Superman. So maybe, yeah. maybe come he's up like with a trick. He's like Batman powers. Yeah, he can, and no he can trick him. <laughs> yeah. Well, now I mean, here's another question, though. Which Superman is it? Is this pre-crisis or post-crisis? Is this Superman? Yeah, is it New Fifty Two Superman? Is it yeah. current Superman? Because he he has had some radical changes over yeah. the years. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. If you take if you take like uh, Superman after like after he died and he came back. Uh, there was like this. He was, he was I don't know. He, he was killed and all that black. Suit. Well, he was. Well, he was killed <laughs> oh, with fertilizer, yeah. and he and he and he multiplied and came back. And like he, one of them was, he was like a force of nature or something like that. Not that Superman, but like when he came down to earth and became like a regular, like just uh, a superhero that wasn't you know a god. Maybe not so much. You know, Thanos could probably take him. What do you guys think? Yeah. Um, I think you take him like that. What do you think about though, Superman? From Justice League, the movie, the, the current one, mm -hmm. versus Thanos with the gauntlet without the ability to just wipe you out of existence. Because mm. Spider-Man got some hits in yeah. Yeah. on this yeah. version of Thanos. <laughs> right. So he's, yeah. he's not like comic book Thanos where he just goes, done, you know, it's, you know, he had to actually, you know, do some stuff. Well, does so, Superman, does Super Nutman understand... The gaunt will he know that Thanos gets power from the gauntlet off the off the get, or will he have to figure it out? If he has to figure it, he just has to figure it out himself, and he probably won't. And we'll see for a while. So yeah, so if it's this version, if it's the if it's the movie version of Superman, he wouldn't. Yeah, comic version because so Batman is aware of the Marvel universe. Yeah, right. So logic would say he probably told his best friend, "Hey, real quick." If you ever see a guy with a fancy gauntlet, yeah. <laughs> kill that man immediately. <laughs> All right, Pete, check out Will's comments while I uh, while I say this. Okay, can Superman though, even from a distance, would he be able to even just? I mean, do, do we assume he's got his uh, his uh, uh, rays? Right, he's got oh, his. Yeah, uh, man, like man. Man. So can he just melt that gaunt? I mean, not even the nope. stones, but the gauntlet itself, like destroy the gauntlet. I mean, well, what he no. could do, what he could do. Is go for the head like Thanos said in the movie. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. the, the good thing about the gauntlet is its one weakness is its wielder. Yeah. And so if they can't perceive it, right, then it's it's over. <clears throat> All right. So I got I, go. Will says Will says that, and this is a good point. The movie Superman does not have Thanos's will. Thanos has a willpower. Greater than the than the movie Superman, I, I have to agree. He because yeah. he gets all caught up in his emotions and he's uh, he's. <laughs> you know, but anyway, no. All right, so I got a couple points on this. That's so, true. He has killed though. Yeah, but he was like, "Never get a kill." Thanos, kill again. Thanos killed his daughter and shed one tear and walked off. Yeah. So so he's got that to go up against. But all right. So look, here's a couple things, Mike. He can't melt that gauntlet. There's no way. 
That gauntlet was forged by a star, and Superman's eye beams are not that hot. So that's not going to do it, right? I mean, that's not going to no. do it. I um, thought lasers were hotter than the sun. No. Well, well if he okay, pulls, so now, well, it depends on which version of Superman. So if we're talking yeah. about the, the, the League movie version, he is massively weaker than comic yeah. book Superman. Super mm-hmm. So he, as far as we know, can't do that. Yeah. Um, so... You know, because like, and it looks like this version of Thanos isn't um, uh, all knowing and all powerful. Because in yeah. the comics, he was one with the universe, so he yeah. knew everything. But in in this version, he almost lost to Mantis and Spider Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know, the toss up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you mean without the gauntlet, he was omnipotent? No, no, with the with the gauntlet, with the oh, gauntlet, okay. Okay. he right. was with the universe, yeah. and he it was. Comics. Well, he only had like well, he had four of the six. Well, no, in, in, in the original Infinity Gauntlet storyline, when because like, he got all of them halfway through issue one, oh, but like right. I think it was like issue two or three where he just became part of the universe and he's like, oh, I'm God. Yeah. Right. And yeah, but he's not like that in the in the Marvel he's, universe. He's not trying in the MCU. To, he's not trying to court Lady Death in the movie. Yeah. That's so true. like the whole death whole number isn't really a factor. It's just he wants to be balanced. Right. So he, he's more of like a you know maniacal maniac instead of a mad titan yeah and look look yeah. if he's if thanos is using the gauntlet if he's got the gauntlet at his disposal and he's got the reality stone superman is to- well if he figures it out so so do, do any of the stones give him that that uh prescient knowledge like could he could he like just reach out to the universe and learn about superman maybe not because the mind stone the mind stone, the mind stone read his yeah. mind be like oh cool kryptonite made right. kryptonite here you go or red sun <laughs> All of a sudden, yeah, use the reality yeah. soon. Yeah. Whoop! Red he sun. Can guess Superman's what, bro? Bones to kryptonite. Yeah. yeah. Oh! Oh! oh. Yes. Yeah. So. Ouch. Yeah. Thanos. Thanos, Thanos with the gauntlet. Thanos with the gauntlet. Thanos with the gauntlet. Yeah. I don't think Superman stands a chance. Now, if Superman knows, if he gets keyed in ahead of time, Superman uses super speed, yanks that gauntlet off. It's done. Yeah, because I, I, and as much as I hate Superman, Thanos can't react to faster than light. He yeah, just. Right, yeah. He just can't. He just can't. Yeah. <laughs> if he knows Superman's coming, he has a chance. If he doesn't know it, it's over. Well, even so, if he knows he's coming, you still have to react. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So you're saying with the right knowledge, even the Flash? No, because the Flash doesn't have the the strength to pull it off. Flash well, is pretty strong. Oh, so the Flash has something called the infinite mass punch. Yeah. Oh. It, it, it's a punch that literally, if you got hit with it, you're just dead. Yeah, you're toast. You, yeah. There's no fighting. <laughs> you just cease to exist because it's infinite hey. mass. Mike, not huh. only that, but the Flash could grab that gauntlet and vibrate it right through his hand. Like, it, mm. and it's off his hand. Oh, there you go. So. Good, 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 one. good one. All right. right. Okay, so, uh, so, all right, who are we, uh, ultimately, who wins? So, between the movie versions, more times than not, mm-hmm. and no one ever tell Walter I said this, <laughs> I have to do it with Superman. More times than not. <laughs> But, right, Walters. You know, let's, Walter. let's redact this entire. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that's uh, what was his uh, Twitter uh, handle again? Uh, uh, okay, no, so, no. So Will Will Conway is our resident comic book uh, uh, aficionado, and oh, he says that he's, oh, you know Will? Shit, you know Will? Yeah. So yeah. Will yeah. says, yeah. What am I talking about? You know Will? Will says, with the gauntlet, you're literally unstoppable. Thanos defeated about six Galactus level dudes with no problem. He only lost because Warlock played on his arrogance. Yes. Yeah. Comic, book fans. Comic, yeah. Comic, Comic book fans. Comic book fans. Yeah. Right before Superman. Yeah. MCU mm-hmm. version. Is, mm-hmm. I mean, Star Lord got a hit in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking Star Lord. Yeah. All right, Mike. Let's, Captain let's America to, held his hand back. Yeah. yeah. Let's go to the next one, Mike. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, well, one of you gentlemen um, bring one to the table yeah. next. Okay. So, and I'm willing to let you bring literally any version of Superman against this character. So have you ever heard of Dark Knight's Metal? It was a, it was a comic series that was uh, earlier this year, and it, it had different versions of evil Batman from across the negative multiverse. And uh, there was a Batman that had the power of Doomsday. Yeah. There was a Batman that stole the power of Aquaman. Um, but the best Batman, which combined everything I love into one character, was Dawnbreaker Batman. This was a Batman who, uh, when he, as, a, as a child, after his parents got killed, was chosen by a Green Lantern ring. And he, his, his willpower overrode the, the ring's no-kill rule. 
What? And then he used the ring and killed everyone in his universe. <laughs> so. I mean, how about him against uh, Thanos? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my whole thing is, I love the lantern ring because it's, you know, it's the power of intelligence, creativity, right, you know, right. made real. And then you put it with my, one of my favorite characters of all time, the smartest man, the world's greatest detective, Batman, together. I don't think you can beat that. So I, it, it, it doesn't need to be Superman. You can pick anyone, and I guarantee you Don Breaker can beat him. Hmm. Okay, Mr. all right, so wait a minute. Intelligence alone. Mr. Mr. Mitchell Blake. Oh, for... <laughs> <laughs> okay, except for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so so uh, hold that one because that's that's obviously going to be that's going to be your uh, omega level. You're bringing him to the mat, right? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. So, but so, but what about what about a, your own? What bring up versus? What do you what do you got? You got anything in mind, or do you want me to hit um, you with a, well, a choice? One I've always liked to I always like to argue with Walter is Hulk versus Doomsday, because Doomsday is essentially a gray Hulk with spikes that DC was like, oh look, uh, yeah. he's original. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So what was it about Doomsday that he got he, he was able to beat Superman? Was it be, did he have kryptonite in him or something, or was there was there something about him that was crypt, because he was Kryptonian, or was he Kryptonian? Well, my, I know that's from the movies. Well, it's not from the movies, but in the comic books, one of my it's one of my favorite villain backstories. It's like there's this evil Kryptonian scientist who took a baby and kept killing it and re uh, make uh, like reanimating it, and so like every single like death it occurred, it was like able to build a tolerance against. And then it basically got to the level of Doomsday and then got released on the universe. And uh, I think in the comic books, he KO'd Wonder Woman, Aquaman. He hit everybody. Flash, everyone just immediately. And then, you know, got in a big punch out with Superman. Right. But it's it's like he every single death happened to it and then it was able to right. go against it. So let's define which ones you're using first. Yeah. So I would say Death of Superman, Doomsday. Doomsday. Yeah. Versus World Breaker Hulk. Uh, did you guys ever read the World War Hulk storyline? Yes. I've, okay. I haven't read it, but I've listened to it on um, Comics Explained. Oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I would say World Breaker Hulk versus Doomsday. Comics, yeah. Now, I don't know much I'm about Doomsday. Hulk. I, I can't. I can't speak on that one. <laughs> so basically, with Hulk, look, you take, you take the Hulk <laughs> and you, you turn him into a gladiator. So he's he's really learning how to fight. He he knows how to fight now. It's and not he's got just his him, he's not just him smashing stuff. He's he's actually like a, you know a world class gladiator, and all that Hulkness. Yeah, no, that dude's dead. And and he can talk to Banner, because as, oh. as you saw, oh. in, 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 he's toast. Yeah, he can, yeah, he can talk to Banner. Like they're like they're not enemies, but they're not they're not homies. But he can't talk to him. Like hey, how do we not die right now? Right. Yeah, right. You know, they're, right, they're each other's man in the chair when they need each other. <laughs> right, yeah. and yeah. so I mean, I think you know what we what we saw from Bat or, or Superman versus Doomsday is that Doomsday can be punched to death. Yeah, yeah. Now I, I believe Doomsday can't fly, right? You lose Kryptonian. No, he just jumps. He just jumps good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so Doomsday is a is a Kryptonian. Kryptonian cells. So, sometimes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not versed on Doomsday, so I'm gonna have to plead ignorance on that. But I will have to say Basically, he's like a version of the Hulk that they made to go toe to toe with Superman. Yeah. Okay. But I but like so like basically you, you can't ever kill him the same way twice. Yeah. So like if you punched him in the heart and his heart exploded, the next time you could not do that. Yeah. Hmm. So wait, what what about the dude who um it, that's not Doomsday that was in the movie was okay. was that wonder well, here's the thing. Yeah. So okay. okay. So here's the thing. So I just poked the bees nest. <laughs> it was they were passing it off as Doomsday. Yeah. Okay. And then when the whole world said that's stupid, they're like, oh no, we're kidding. Yeah. Real Doomsday is still out there. Please forget this existed. Okay. Because he's like a gigantic ninja turtle. It was all right. Really, it was but really I have an, all right. So I have a better idea now. Then okay. I yeah, I have to agree with Pete. I'd have to go with the Hulk. Yes. Take that, Walter. <laughs> it, it's still, it would still be like an extinction level event. Like the world they fought on would be decimated. Yeah, I don't Are think you? it would survive. No, but uh, Hulk would win. Good, good. 
That's why I, I had to cleanse my palate after saying Superman would win. So. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay. Nice. All, All right. right. Give us another one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go lower. I'm going to go lower on the, on the poll. Maybe uh, we can talk a little bit more. Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, Strategy? Or, yeah. Technique? Like uh, uh, nuts and bolts. You know what I mean? Um, so. I, I, all right, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you uh, a choice. I, I, I did these Burke Dennis choice because if I made bad pits, I wanted to have a backup. So, Iron <laughs> Fist versus Hawkeye. Okay. Or Hawkeye versus Green Arrow. Let's go Iron Hawkeye Fist. Versus Green Arrow. Hawkeye versus Green Arrow. No, Hawkeye versus Green Arrow. But Hawkeye, I, Hawkeye I, is Iron Green Fist, Arrow. Iron Fist is gonna walk up to him one and hit. punch him one time. And his his head will explode. No, I got. Hold on, wait, wait. He doesn't have to walk up to him though. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I got I got one for you. Which Hawkeye can I use? Can I mm. use Ultimate Hawkeye? Because if I can use Ultimate Hawkeye, Iron Fist. Goodbye. Because mm. Ultimate Hawkeye is is an assassin for the government, so he's not just he's not just a guy with a bow. He's just as good with a gun and forks. He winds up killing a bunch of assassins that come into his house with with cutlery. That's he's just true. like, oh, 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 yeah, it is. Yeah. That whole year, like, he actually scary. he actually kills somebody. I think with his fingernail. He pulls one of his fingernails off and flicks at a guy and kills him. So I mean, is he bullseye? Now? I don't know why Punisher's done that. Yeah, he's like bullseye. Like I don't, I, I don't know if they were, if they had phased out bullseye and just kind of, kind of combined them into Hawkeye or not. Because I, I didn't read uh, of the Ultimate no. series. I read the Ultimates, so like the Avengers version of the Ultimate Universe. Right. I, I read that one a lot. Um, I didn't see anything. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they did balls, bullseye. I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure they did bullseye. They may have, but Hawkeye was bad ass in that. Okay, so then if we're doing it, if we're doing him versus Iron Fist, which version of Iron Fist and which Iron Fist? Yeah. Okay, so if we're talking about Iron Fist on the on the TV no, series, no, we're not talking no. about Netflix because that doesn't no. exist. <laughs> okay. that, that's <laughs> not no, that's not a thing, right? Right. <laughs> so. Gonna, it never happened. And I, I, I would go with Orson Rand, the one before Dan, uh, Danny Rand, the one okay. who had gun kata. So that 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 makes it so we have range oh, versus range. That's, that's right. yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we have range versus range, but how is our aim? Because I mean, Hawkeye. Hawkeye is, well, I mean, obviously, Hawkeye's is always going to be yeah better. better. But Orson had chi bullets. So I don't know. Yeah. Like now. I don't know if Will knows more about, about Orson. All I know is that he had guns, he was good at fighting with it, and he could put his chi through him. Um, right. You know, which has to give you some kind of advantage. <laughs> right. Well, not only that, but I, I'm, I'm willing to bet that the that um, Iron Fist can, like, probably do that, that I don't know, that, that you know, knocking arrows out of the sky with his hands and, 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 and dodging arrows the way a kung fu master, you know, like mystical kung fu yeah. masters should be able to. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. but so he, he might be able to knock Hawkeye's arrows out of the way. But then again, if we're talking, if we're not talking, uh, you know, if we're talking like um, Hawkeye with you know crazy arrows and stuff, he'd go sure. to knock the arrow out of the way and the thing explodes, and then right. that's the end of that. So, but who right. knows? Not, right. Well, so now here's a question though. So, ha has has Iron Fist ever tagged somebody like Quicksilver? Because if if you're using Ultimate Hawkeye, who uses guns? That means he's using bullets that are moving like the speed of sound or faster, depending on what kind of you know weapon he's using. Can Iron Fist even react to that? I I don't think so. I don't think Iron Fist can. I, I've never seen him react to no. uh, Quicksilver. Quicksilver is like what three or four times the speed of sound. Daredevil can do it better. Well, that's that's Netflix though. No, no, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've never. And he would he would have to hold on, Pete. Like yeah. he would have to. He could deflect it with his fist, but he would have to know what was coming and have it activated, right? right? Exactly. So, right. Oh, man. I did not think. Oh, I thought I thought Iron Fist, by nature of being a super, could do it. But uh, if he could close the distance, then it would be a fight. What's the starting distance? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, football, football, football field. field. No. Football field? Hawkeye wins. Hawkeye, Hawkeye wins. Hawkeye, come on. Right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe what? in a small room. Wait, wait. Like a prison <laughs> I, I got to I got let, let's make it fair, all right? Okay. Football field distance, but urban environment. So Iron oh. Fist can hide and 
and all kinds of stuff. Like he can use his, I don't know. Does he have any, I, I don't remember. Does Iron Fist have any kind of ninja -y type, like stealthy training at all? A, a, a little bit, but so, I don't know if he can get past Hawkeye. Cause, yeah. Cause I, I see Hawkeye going for the high ground immediately. And anything that moves is going to get skewered. Well, even still, he can hit someone between the trees. That's not a problem yeah. for him. Oh man, yeah. I'd have to I'd I'd have to give it to the ultimate Hawkeye, not yeah. regular Hawkeye, not ultimate not CU Hawkeye. The ultimate though, I think yeah. he could do it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right. There we go, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um. Let's see. Uh, Pete, did you have something you wanted to bring bring up before we? Uh... Um, all right. So, so I'm not I'm not super versed with these two heroes. Um, mm -hmm. but, so I want you guys to speak to them because I'm sure you're you're much better versed than I am. Um, like for example, so, so Jessica Jones is one of them. I don't really. The only thing I know of Jessica Jones is is the series. So I watch you know watch both of the series, uh, or both seasons of the, of the series. Um, but other than that, I never read anything. I never even heard of Jessica Jones before then. And, you know, let me toss in my geek card. I, I, I had no idea. I was like, who's this Jessica Jones? <laughs> um, but I knew who Black Widow was. Now, as far as I know, Black Widow is, I mean, she's, you know, she's a, a Soviet super agent. Uh, she's got her widow bite, which is like a, like a low level power blast. Um, and she can Elect fight like the devil. Yeah. Right. yeah, it's, a, it's like, yeah. yeah, but she could fight like the devil. Um, who do you think, her or Jessica Jones? Because I'm going to say that, you know, Black Widow is, is going to know who Jessica Jones is, is going to know a lot about her because, you know, we can't take away her, her, uh, her, her, you know, her black ops type stuff. You can't take that away from her. That's, that's, that's a core of who she is. So she probably knows yeah. a lot about Jessica Jones. So she's going to know how to fight her. She's going to have the edge on her because Jessica Jones is not going to know a whole lot about Black Widow. However, Jessica Jones is powerful as crap. She's got so, superhuman strength. So, so what yeah. do you? Th what, but she's not invincible. Okay. So, so no. what do you? What, what do you guys think? All right. So here's the thing. So, Jessica Jones had a, had a tough time fighting with ninjas because she can she can kind of fly. Mm -hmm. She's kind of strong in terms of the Marvel universe. She's kind of strong. Right. She's very not bulletproof. Yeah. Right. Black Widow fought with Thanos' Black Order. <laughs> okay. Hmm. And so I'm gonna give it to Black Widow because yeah. granted, if Jessica gets one hit in, just one hit, Widow is down. Yeah. But she's not gonna get that hit. In fact, she might not even know she's dying. Yeah. <laughs> she, might just see, she might just see God like what happened? <laughs> right. So in other words, you're saying you're you're saying she might not only not get a hit in, she might not even have realized she was in a fight. No, no, she no. she won't know she's dead. Yeah, right. There's She'll be eating breakfast, getting ready for this fight that somebody was setting <laughs> right. her up with, and die from the poison that was in her breakfast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she's gonna take a drink from from some Jack Daniels, and it's poison. Yeah. And the right. widow will, will, will roll up and go, see? <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure there's a, a Marvel story where she kills the whole universe. Probably. Oh, I mean, Marvel, Marvel loves that. Yeah, Marvel so, loves I'm killing their sure entire she universe. Killed the whole universe. But yeah, no, she she definitely. I mean, you, you gotta think in universe. I know it's an out universe reason, but in universe, there's gotta be a reason why they didn't ask for her help <laughs> during anything yeah. that's happened because they know you can hit hard. That's cool, but you know, so can literally everyone else in this universe. I oh, mean, dude, she's was... a mess. She is. She is a. <laughs> and I. And don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to bad talk her. I love that about the character. I love that she's a mess. I think it's right. awesome. You know, I mean, that's my favorite thing about that character from watching this series. My favorite thing was how much of a mess she was. It's so yeah. cool. Um, no, but... yeah, definitely. I, I like her character, but yeah. the only person from the net. There's only two people in the Netflix universe who are dangerous, and that's Punisher and Daredevil. Oh God! Yeah. Everyone else is just an untrained child who's like, "I have powers! Look at me!" <laughs> and, <laughs> you know? and that's not to take any way, anything away from Luke Cage. I love Luke Cage because he's he's really a good guy. He's like a nice dude, and he's and right. he's, he's he's a very local hero, and he's great as a local hero. I mean, like, right. n actually, no one's better a local hero than he is because he cares about his community more than any of those heroes care about their community. Yeah. And that's so, true. so he's great. But like you said, he's a guy who's really tough. All right, but yeah. you put him up against a, like a real supervillain, and he ain't going exactly last. because right. they don't. Him and Jones don't know how to fight, so right. <laughs> ding, ding, time, oh. <laughs> time. Uh, so 
we are running a little low on time because I definitely want to get to the game still. And uh, right. so, uh, let's see, David, you already explained who your uh, ultimate, who you want to bring to Met, who you want to um, have in the uh, uh, what was that called, the Battle World, the Grand Marley, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> the Grand oh, Parlay. Right. So, uh, Pete, uh, who are you going to bring? Okay, I'm I'm going to bring. If I have to pick someone who I think, who I think can win any fight, I'm going to say Dr. Doom. I think oh, Dr. I Doom, I think he can win any fight. Uh, he's beat the Beyonder. He's beat Galactus. He's beat, oh. God, he's, he beat Thanos. He, he, the, the latest Infinity thing, the whole universe was destroyed. And guess who's left? Dr. Doom. 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 <laughs> so okay. I'm going with Dr. Doom. All right. and, he, and he's a wreck. You know who he would be in love with? Jessica Jones. Probably. <laughs> yeah. I, no so, doubt. All right. So, yes, all that is impressive. But Dawnbreaker Batman w cleared his universe and then came to the mainstream DC universe to try and do it again. <laughs> I mean, that, that means he had, to, he had to have gone against Darkseid at a point. He KO'd Superman. Superman's gone. All the way. All the, all the cores. All right, I mean, all right. You you've made your case. Let <laughs> let, let Cedric uh, give his case before I I dominate all of you with mine. Uh oh, oh um, yeah. who, who who would you pick? Who who would I pick out of those two? Oh no, or anyone? You know? No 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 no. All of you are your favorite. My you want to bring to to the mat, and we're all gonna have a battle royale. Who do you think is gonna come out on top? Just one of my favorites um, would be. Uh, the Venom sim symbiote black suit Spider-Man. Oh. So Sp oh, Peter nice. Parker with the symbiote, mm -hmm. um, peak rage, not the movie finger gun Spider-Man. <laughs> Sorry, okay, <laughs> all right. I was gonna... No, we're talking not, not that late, that 80s, late 80s, late uh, 80s, after the... Uh, um, the... Oh, I was in Secret Wars. Yes. Secret, yeah, Secret Wars. At the end of Secret Wars when he comes back? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. Peter Parker, right. yeah, with symbiote. All right. Uh, let me tell you who's going to kill him. <laughs> uh, Deadpool. Oh, Jesus. I knew it. Oh, I knew oh. it. Sorry. Okay. Well, we... But uh, who, who stole... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> who stole the Infinity Gauntlet? Uh, yeah. You can't... And, and, and do, you, do you remember where, how he stole it? He stole how? the... He stole the Thanos copter. Do you remember that? Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> right. If you can steal the Thanos copter, you can do anything. And the reason why he can steal the friggin' Thanos copter is because some bitch realizes he's in a damn comic, and he just goes to the page. <laughs> he goes to the comic with that and takes it. Right. Because <laughs> he's the only one that knows about it. Right. Dang it. He's think about that. The Deadpool loophole. He right. doesn't survive right. a punch from the hole. Well, yeah. I mean, also, he can, he can just go and write the comic where he wins. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's literally like Bugs Bunny. He can pick up the pencil, right, and just yeah. erase Thanos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean I, even, even if we don't go with that, I mean, anything that even Dawnbreaker, was it Dawnbreaker's? Yeah, Batman, Dawnbreaker, yeah. Yeah, like, because uh, I've even heard um, comics, comics Explained and a friend of his, they, they talked about a, a versus with Batman and... Uh, and Deadpool, and the ultimate realizes, like, you can do whatever you want to Deadpool. He'll wake up again. I mean, yes, at That's some true. point, Deadpool has to be smart enough to realize that, you know, yes, he could be put in a perpetual blender, and, you know, that is one way that he could just be kept Ooh. dead, or, you know, at least kept gooified or something. Right. Uh, but, but I mean, you know, short of that, uh, you know... Even then, though, like, the thing that's, that I, I, I consider Deadpool's strongest weapon is that death is in love with him. Right. And yeah. you never know if death might be willing to, like, like, death won't take him, but death might take his opponent. <laughs> I mean, death, I mean, this. death is in, oh, oh, what a love triangle. So oh. Thanos is in love with death, and death is in love with Deadpool, and Deadpool oh, yeah. probably Thanos would do Thanos. Deadpool. He yeah. hates <laughs> Deadpool. Right. <laughs> but I thought Thanos is the one who, who convinced um, Mistress Death to make, um, to make Deadpool completely immortal. Well, he, he he cursed Deadpool with immortality, right? So that he can never be with Mistress Death because he wanted it's, exactly. It changes sometimes, yeah. but basically, yeah. what it is is he hates Deadpool because Deadpool's getting in there. 
No. Okay. <laughs> a very oh, dysfunctional nice. relationship. Yes, it is. Because Mistress yeah. Death can't fully be with him until he's dead. No. And, 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 and he can't and, be dead. And the funny thing is, in this triangle, Mistress Death is the only normal person. She, she's doing her job. Think about nice. it. <laughs> and yes, women, I, will tell my mom, I will say to my mom, yes, I do. I have a bro crush on Deadpool. So, yeah. All right. uh, and real quick, <laughs> David Benavides, I got to give him a shout out. He said... Um, he said he can't respond because he's about to drive. He's at a gas station. But uh, he said, Squirrel Girl. Enough said. <laughs> True. She's done some. She, she's KO'd the universe. She has well. killed the whole Marvel Universe before. Yeah. She's done some ridiculous things. All right. So, yeah. so why, don't we, why don't we leave that at that with, uh, with Squirrel Girl on top of, uh, on top, well. Uh, <laughs> yes. Squirrel Girl on top of everyone, huh? And that said, uh, let's, are we ready to go for the game? You guys ready yeah. to play a game? Sure. Yeah. All right, Mike. Is ready. It, uh, hey, hi everybody! It's game time with the Mythwits, and I am your game master, Mike Kafis. And today we are going to play. How tall is that superhero? Uh -huh. Now, here's what we're gonna do. I I have ten superheroes uh, from the mainly from the MCU, but I have a couple from the DC universe that have been portrayed by actors. Uh, and you are going to tell me how tall that actor is, okay? Now, here's how this is going to work, uh, and I encourage you to gamify this any way you would like, but uh, uh, we're going to play golf rules. So no matter whatever the height is, however close you are, the difference in points are the points you get, and the person with the lowest amount of points at the end of the game wins. Okay. Okay. All right. Ready to Ready. get started? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. All right, let's do this. First up on the chop, I mean, on the uh, tall, how tall are you block, is Black Widow, as played by Scarlett Johansson. So, uh, and we're going to go in this order, because this is how I have this lined up. I have uh, David guessing first, followed by Cedric, and then followed by Pete. So, uh, David, all you have to do is just basically tell me, how tall do you think Scarlett Johansson is? I'm going to say 5'5". Five, five. All right. 5'5". Five, five. And Cedric? 5'4". Uh, 5'4". <laughs> yes. And Peter? Dude, I think she's really short. I'm going to go 5'1". All right. Peter goes 5'1". And the person who was the closest was David nah. because Scarlett Johansson is 5'8". Oh, oh, shit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She's as tall as me. No. Hollywood crazy. I know. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, David is winning with three points, followed by Cedric with four points, followed by Peter with seven Wait, points. Do I put these points in? Yes, you go and put okay. them in as well. All right, so tell me, tell me them again. <laughs> uh... David has three. Okay. Cedric has four. Okay. And you have seven. Seven, yay. <laughs> now, okay. David. Yes. Actually, we could, uh, so, that, so that there is some gamification. I'm going to switch to Cedric going first okay. this time. So, uh, Cedric, uh, your superhero is Star-Lord, as played by Chris Pratt. How tall is Chris Pratt? I think Chris Pratt is pretty pretty tall. I think he's like around 6'3". Six, 6'3". Three. Six, three. Six, three. All right. And uh, Peter? I'm going to say 6'8". Six, at. Six, six foot. At. Yes. I know what an at is. Thank you, sir. <laughs> David. David. I'm going to say 5'11". 511. Oh, nice, okay. That's a that's a good one. Good round number. Actually, it's not too round. But uh <laughs> so, at the end of this round, Cedric was correct. Damn it. Because <laughs> is more correct, the most correct. Yeah. Because Chris Pratt is in, in fact 62. Oh. I was going to say it wrong. Uh, <laughs> no. She got so, my first line. And this oh. is not with this is not price is right rules. You can go over and under. The, or there's an over and under whatever you want to do. Uh so uh, that was Cedric with one point, David was a difference of three points, and Peter a difference of two points. Nice. Okay. 
All right. Uh, Peter, yeah. your superhero is Thor, as played by Chris Hemsworth. Crimson, Crimson, Crimson Hisworth. No, Chris, Chris Hisworth. Chris Hisworth. Uh, sure for yes, uh, yes. He is. He he is one of these Norway dudes, right? I think he's Norwegian. Right? Norwegian. He's like, yes, he's got that voice. Um, and they are all like retardedly, ridiculously. Sorry, ridiculously <laughs> tall. I was trying to say mm-hmm. ridiculous and tall at the same time. Um, I'm gonna say, God, I'm gonna. He's got to be. Oh, he's got to be six. Five. I'm gonna say six four. Six four. And David. I'm gonna go with six three. Six three. And Cedric. I'm going six two. That's what the guy. Six two. Six two. Well, gentlemen, one of you is exactly correct. That person. Is David? Ah, yes. Ah. God damn it! Because if you notice, him and Star I mean, it, Wars it, are six, even. Yeah. So, <laughs> so right, that's right. You got to look at them and think about the movies. Think about how no. they look at each other, or <laughs> in the- no, they do force the perspective in those movies. Doing his voice. Perfect. They made and Tom Cruise look tall, though. So, so Mike, what's the scores? <laughs> so that's David with zero, Cedric with one, and you with one. That was not close. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. All right. Uh, that would be David's uh, first this time with uh, Captain America, Chris Evans. How tall is Captain America? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say six one. All right, six one. And Cedric, I think Cap is six four. All I think right. he's six four. Okay. And Peter. See, I was gonna say six one. Um. So we got six one and six four, right? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say. Hold on, let me gamify <laughs> this a little bit here. I'm way behind. Mike, this is the last question. No. Okay. Oh, okay. Then I got a little time. Right, I'll I say six. <laughs> I'm gonna say six two. All right. Six two. Well, in this case, uh, Thor is actually six feet tall. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not Thor. Uh, Captain America is six feet tall, Chris Evans. Mm. Uh, now that would be then, uh, Peter, you have two points, Cedric with four points, and David, a comfortable one point away. Yes! Man. Made it by, missed it by that much. <laughs> Close. Literally. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, now. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Will Conway, Will Conway, we got a retraction. Will Conway said Chris Hemsworth is Australian. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to say anything. Okay, <laughs> but please feel free. <laughs> feel free, especially if he's wrong. Feel yeah. free. Hey, um, hey, wait a minute. Whenever this guy's wrong, go right ahead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Robert Downey Jr., Iron Man. Mm. Cedric, how tall is Iron Man? Not in the suit. <laughs> Not in the suit. I just remember a friend of ours comparing heights. I think he's 5'8". Five eight. All right, and Peter. <laughs> I was going to say five eight. Uh, I'll say five nine. Oh, I'm a backup. Five nine. And David. Five uh, five seven. All right, five seven is a legal uh, answer. From what, from what I wanted to do. Right? <laughs> uh, well. Um. One of you is dead on, which would be Peter nice. at five nine. There he is. Yeah. So that would be Peter with zero, Cedric with one, and David with three. No, no two, 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 two. <laughs> two. Okay. Oh, look at that! It's getting close. All right, it's getting close. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're we're you know we gotta speed this up. I tell you what, why don't we do? Uh, we'll do two more. How's that? Okay. Okay. That's good because you only have All two right. more spaces in the score thing. Oh, well, good. <laughs> All right, that works. So I, I I'm gonna do uh, Batman as played by Batfleck. Oh, Batfleck. Okay. Okay. So uh, who was it now that goes 
first. I believe that's Peter going okay. first. I'm going to say, I know uh, Ben Affleck, 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 Affleck <laughs> is, um, he's a little tall. He's a little on the tall end. I'm not really sure how tall, but he's he's not a short guy. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 6'2". Mm. All right, 6'2". And uh, David? I'm going to say 6 feet. Good six feet solid. And Cedric, what was your friend comparing heights with Batfleck the other day? Uh, uh, six one. Split the difference. Really? You going gonna to do that? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Six one. And that would mean that the closest person in this case was Peter at six four. Oh, with two oh, inches. Six four. Wow. Six, wow. Four. He's a tall bat flesh. Yeah, I, I knew he was tall. I wasn't sure how tall. Oh, okay, us? so. He's as tall. Yeah, he's right. He's eye level with us. Good Lord. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and that would be Cedric with three points away and David with four inches. Mm. Away. You know, I like so, this game better last time when I won. <laughs> well, hey, no, we have what, a, <laughs> one more, don't we, Pete? Yeah, we got one more. One more. Okay. All, right, All right, here you go. And, and right now, uh, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, the score is thirteen, uh, David to uh, fourteen, with uh, Cedric and Peter. Yeah, it's oh. tight, dude. All it's right. real tight. Okay. All right, so yeah. I am going to go with my last one. I'm going to pick Ryan Reynolds Ooh. as Deadpool. Mm. How tall? Shocker, Mike. Or Shocker. how short is Ryan Reynolds? I think, I think I, I, <laughs> he's I think Canadian. Right? <laughs> like that means anything. <laughs> it's, not, it's not an answer to it. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. Uh, who's going? We'll, we'll just go. Uh, who goes? I don't know who's just going. Go, just go on the line. David, Cedric, me. Okay. I'm going to go 6-3. All right. 6-3. And Cedric. I'm, I'm going to go 6-2. Six, two. I'm gonna kill you. Okay. And see your chance I, to pull ahead or not. I think Ryan Reynolds isn't that tall. I'm gonna go five eleven. Oh. Five eleven. Good gamification there. That being said, Ryan Reynolds is six two. Oh, bastard! Are you serious, Ryan? <laughs> giving yes. giving Cedric uh, on the nose, right? Man. Yeah. Yes. So that means it's the last time you ever see Cedric. No. <laughs> David no, gets what? Fun. Oh, I, you know what? This is interesting news, Pete, what? because that's uh, Cedric with uh, zero, David with one, Peter with three. I believe we have a we have a, a group effort tie technically. I mean, I guess hey, we're gonna have to just give it to. That's, that's all right. Because you know what? Hey, both hey, of hey, you are winners. You know what? Offshoot. <laughs> yeah. Yay, yes. Offshoot comics. Not offshoot. So this is what you get for your prize. <laughs> so the only person that didn't win in this case is Black Superman. Because he yeah. didn't show up. That's right. Fucking you gotta you gotta show up to win. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Fantastic. So thank you for playing our game. No problem. It was a pleasure. I will beat you next time. <laughs> and, gentlemen, thank you for coming by. We always love when you guys come. The, the time flies by. Uh, we could talk superheroes all the time. So you guys know you're always welcome to be by here. Uh, before awesome. I read, well, actually, we're going to do this first. Yes. Uh, if you are interested in finding more about um, the Frog of War, which I highly suggest you do, uh, check out first and foremost Facebook.com forward slash the Fog of War. Uh, you can also check out uh, offshootcomics.com to find out the other interesting and um, wonderful yeah. comics that Offshoot does. And also, if you wanted to pick up a digital copy, which evidently is the only way you're going to be able to get, uh, unless you can find it, uh, maybe, you know, it could be at a, at a comic shop somewhere, you know, it could have been traded in. I don't know why someone there would want to do that. Well. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, but check out comic, uh, uh, Comixology. Uh, uh, forward slash oddwell forward slash comics dash series uh, forward slash one two two zero one six. We we didn't pick that. Didn't, yeah. no, that was coming on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, but we'll we'll uh, I'll have that I'll have that in the show notes as well. So 
Uh, <laughs> that being said, Peter, before we close out, why don't you tell us a little bit about why I am, I am steering the wheel of this monstrous beast of a show? Right, right. All right, so as of November 1st, I entered NaNoWriMo. I am writing my novel. 50,000 words, 30 days. Um, and that means I have to type, I have to type 1,667 words a day on average to keep up. Uh, I am on day five. I'm not finished with the day yet. So after we finish this show, I'm going to go and finish up my words for today. Um, I managed to, to knock out 707 words before the show. Uh, I am at sitting pretty right this moment at se- uh, 8,335 words. Uh, if you're wow. if you're looking at a eight and a half by eleven loose leaf piece of paper at font size ten, that's about seventeen pages at this point. So wow. in the past four days and a little bit of today, so so four and a half days, I have written seventeen pages of story. Uh, I'll nice. probably knock probably gonna knock out another two or three tonight. Uh, it has been flowing. This is a story I've been wanting to write for ten years. Uh, it has changed over the 10 years. I've come up with different ideas and changed things around, but um, I'm at that point where it's I'm done. I'm ready to go. And I'm telling you, man, I sit down and it is a breeze. I just start typing. I can't type fast enough to keep up with, with wow. my thoughts as they flow out. So it That's has been great. fantastic. And it's there are so many cool things happening in this story that I didn't think of, which is what happens when you write. Um, and And... I will come back. I'm not going to talk about this anymore. This is the only time you're going to hear about this until the last show of this season. Right. And then we'll talk about the, the wrap up because there's only going to be like four days left in the month. And, and Mike, is, Mike and I are going to talk about what happened and how it went and where I am with the story. But I'll just tell you this right now. When you think of a story, you think of like just bits and pieces of it. And you're like, oh, I'd like this to happen and that to happen. And when you get down to the brass tacks and you start really typing it out, Um, and the characters develop and things happen and you have to make things happen to make other things happen, man, really cool stuff flows out of that. So it has been fantastic. So I, good stuff happens. Yeah. I have have not, you know, somebody told me they're like, Oh, I hope, you know, hope it's not too much of a chore. I'm like, Oh no, man, this is great. I'm loving it. Are you kidding me? Chore. I, I look forward to having opportunities, right? I write all through lunch. I'm like typing, take a bite, type, take a bite, type. It's, it's fantastic. I'm having a good time. Great. I'm, uh, that's awesome. I'm really happy for you. Uh, do you guys, uh, Cedric, uh, uh, David, have you ever heard of NaNoWriMo before? No, I haven't, uh, but okay. I kind of would like to that, that's pretty cool. like to that try is, that. Uh, look into it. It is, it is National Novel Writers Month. It's the whole month of November. There's actually, uh, what is it, NaNoWriMo.com, right? You can or actually dot, register. I think it's dot .org. Yeah, you register okay. and, you, and you, you track your, your word count every day. You make friends with other writers. You encourage each other, send each other messages, okay. and they have all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. If you need like help, like staying motivated and stuff, there's all those resources on there. Yeah. I haven't had to tie into that at all. Like you can get people will will hit you up with. Uh, you can go in there and say, "Hey, I need some inspiration. I'm having a hard time like writing today." And there'll be people in there like, "No, no," and they'll help you get through it. Give you cool, you know. You can do writer sprints. There's all kinds of like um, inspirational things from other like famous writers. They'll write. Uh, things just for Na- NaNoWriMo to, to, to tell you like, hey, you know, your story is going to seem like it sucks when you're writing it, but that's okay. Uh, they all suck the first time you write it. And this is like, the, <laughs> you know, this is, you know, this is like Andy Weir, Stephen King or somebody like that saying, hey, my stories suck when I first write them, but then we go through and we fix all the sucking stuff, you know, and it's like, you know, so don't worry about it. If, if it sucks, just keep going. You'll be fine. It's good. Um, so it's really cool. It's a fantastic. It's, and there's a whole community, Facebook community and everything. It's, it's fantastic. Awesome. That's cool. I just Google it. So we may or may not be doing that. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. like Inktober, but yeah. For yeah. Yeah. we're only yeah. five days behind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool though. Yeah. yeah. So, All right. Awesome yeah. guys. So, uh, that's it. I think we're just going to have to wrap this up in a tidy bow and uh, let Pete get back to Nano Rhino. All right, yeah. Mike, well, here, I'm going to I'm going to roll that closer. Guys, thanks for coming on. Oh, no problem. It's been a Anytime, pleasure. Man. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks. All right. All right, Mike, here you go. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Mythwits. We're live on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask us or our please ask us or our guest questions or just banter with our other myths myth fits 
If you miss our live show, you can catch the Encore episodes on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, we're also on, uh, what are we on? Pod, uh, we, we have audio. We have yeah, we said that. No. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> let's see. If you don't have time for videos, oh, that's oh, that's where it is, Pete. Look at that. You, just if you, don't, there, you, yeah. you did a good job, man. I you did, did a good job. job. Right this <laughs> uh, if you don't have time for the videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher as Bithwits. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it is appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media. Uh, and share this one, please. If you are a fan of the Mythwitch, just share uh, share this video with your friends on your book. You know, just especially if you think your friends might like this. And who wouldn't? If you're a friends of the Mythwitch, you are a friends, friends of um, Oddwell and uh, our friends of Offshoot Comics. Uh, yeah. And uh, Mythwitch is part of the TSR network. Uh, check out the uh, TSRPN.com for more cool shows. And just like uh, Pete and I were on uh, the uh, Wargaming Recon, Recon Holiday Edition, look for that coming out real soon. No, it's out. Uh, make... It's out. Huh? It's out. Go to Wargaming oh. Recon. All right. It's out. Uh, Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it and don't sell it and don't try and make money with it. And also, don't mess with uh, – who was the uh, – who's that uh, Batman guy we don't want to mess with? Your, your Batman? Dawn Breaker Batman. Don't mess with Dawn Breaker Batman for sure. <laughs> uh, check out our other Etherforged uh, – other stuff at etherforged.com for more cool stuff. And check out our on our mailing list. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next time, peace. I'm going to tell you, man, Dr. Doom, he beat the Beyonder, he beat, <laughs> he beat Galactus, he beat everybody! <laughs> <laughs>